Well, welcome to another Dino's Diary and one that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. This is Throop on the Dorset Stour run by RDAA and we came down here about this time last year to test out the new Guru multi-maggot feeders and that session turned out pretty good if I'm honest. So we're going to look back at that session whilst we're here but also while we're here I've got the rods, it'll be rude not to, we're going to talk you through what we're doing on this trip, how we're getting on, how we're doing it and first Chuck, <laughs> I am a jammy sod, six pound one from the Dorset Stour, thank you very much. Jobs are good. Well, middle part of the day is always the slowest, even if you're on fish, which we obviously are. Um, and when the sun's out and it's bright, it makes it even more difficult. But the conditions are exactly the same last year. However, this year, it's nice and mild. Last year, it was minus three. And as soon as me and Gary Newman stepped out of the car, we was here mainly to product test the multi-maggot feeders. So we was hoping for a bite or two, but there was no pressure on us, to be fair. We knew it was gonna be tough, um, but very quickly, we also knew that it was gonna turn into a very, very special session. We'd done the job that we was here to do. We did the final testing for the product that we was here to test, but we also nicked a few decent fish along the way. Take a look. Get in there, I think it's a good chub too. <laughs> well, look at that. Witching hour never lets you down. I got up at half past two this morning, drove 180 miles down here to Throop, and to be fair, when I, when I arrived with a heavy frost on the ground, my heart sunk because I knew it was going to be difficult, but six pounds seven ounces <laughs> to finish the day off like this with a day to go tomorrow, it ain't going to be easy. I've said it from the start, but oh my God, with prizes like this, it's so worth it. Look at this. What an amazing creature. <laughs> I guess my fascination with chub stems back to when I was a kid. Um, I mean, it wasn't my first fish, that was, that was a skimmer. My second fish was a perch, then a roach, or the other way around. So it weren't even like the first species that I ever caught that's sort of sparked the fire in my belly, really. I think it was, it stems back to when my dad used to drop me off on the River Chelmer and the River Blackwater in the six weeks holidays. And I just used to be able to see them. And because I could see them, and they were much bigger than the gudgeon and the roach that I was catching, I thought that I could catch them easy. And I couldn't. They were too clever. I was too clumsy. And it took me ages to work out how to catch these chub. And they weren't even big. They were like two, three pound maximum. There was more to the first trip than just catching big chub. Enter the fleet-footed Gary Newman. <laughs> oh, Gaza. Gaza, come here. Gaza, come here. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> well, how is your luck? Literally five minutes after getting back from doing the intro, Rod went over, five pound four and a quick bite and I genuinely thought between the two of us it would take the vast majority of the day to get just the one bite with the conditions that we're faced with. But sticking to our tactics and continuously casting the maggot feeders soon brought something a little bit bigger. I was on the phone to Gary last night and we were discussing what we'd take and what was doable and I thought that between the two of us over the two days a few five pounders would be absolutely perfect. And he was like, mm, there's a good chance of a six. I didn't think we was gonna be lucky enough. And especially after just two fish, six pound two, this bad boy. It's a stout PB for me, even though I've only done a couple of days down here in the past. But what an awesome creature and well worth getting up at our past two this morning, let me tell you. That is better than any coffee on the planet right now. And to think over the years that I've worked out how to catch them in various different rivers from the, the River Severn, where you can barely cast to the far bank on certain stretches, to tiny little streams where a 12-foot rod sometimes is even too long. 
and to catch some monsters along the way as well. A year on from that awesome trip, and not much in the way of rigs, tackle and tactics had changed. So let's talk rigs and tackle, because actually the way I'm tackling this river and this swim is ever so simple, but you do have to have the right gear. Um, I've got a 12 foot Aventus rod, which is in the backbone, as strong as you're ever likely to need on a river like this. You can cast these 70 gram maggot feeders that I'm using as far as the eye can see, yet they are super to play fish on. And that's really important because when you're maggot fishing, nine times out of 10, you're using quite small hooks. Um, down to six pound drag line, that's tough as old boots. I've used that for lots of different situations. And certainly on any chub that I'm ever likely to hook in the Dorset Stour, it is man enough. But the business end, that is simply it. I'm using the multi maggot feeder in the large, in line, and I'm simply passing the line straight through to a swivel. And I've got a three inch, five pound pure hook link to a size 16 MWG. Now, the only thing that I've done to dock to this to make it a little bit more effective in this situation, because what I'm looking to do, and certainly my experience on these rivers, when you're fishing for a volume of fish and you're trying to create that competition, is that when they come in, they come in in numbers and you tend to get bites really quickly. And so I've just drilled an extra couple of holes in the cap of the feeder, just so that when that feeder hits the deck, those maggots are able to get out as quickly as possible because when they come into that swim, these chub, they tend to be there for a short space of time. And I just want the feeder to empty because I'm rechucking quite often. On rivers where you've not got as many fish, I wouldn't necessarily say that's a great thing because you want the, the maggots to trickle out to last a little bit longer. But in this particular situation, when I, I do feel like there's a few fish out there and when they do enter the swim, I'm getting an awful lot of feeder knocks. Pretty quickly after them feeder knocks, the tip goes over and then slams back and I'm into a fish. And that is because when they're on that feeder, you need a very, very short hook link. And don't be afraid of small hooks because particularly with chub, with their really hard beak-like mouths, a size 16 MWG, which is my river hook of choice, to be fair. I use the 10s all the time for the barbel. I use the 16s and the 18s for the chub. I've never opened one out. And the key to this style of fishing is simple. Find your spot, be happy with your spot, and build that swim. If you see a fish roll downstream or upstream, don't cast around trying to nick a bite from here, there, and everywhere. When you're maggot fishing, you want to draw them fish into your spot. And if you're accurate enough, you can be in for a hell of a good day. sun's just glistening off its bronze flank. Oh, this one's fought really hard. Oh God, look at it. Thinks it's a bloody barbel. I actually think it's quite a good fish. But then they've all been good. <laughs> In my book, there's no such thing as a bad chub. Well, this fish is testament to what I've just told you. Not only about the rigs and the tackle, but the way in which you fish it, because we have seen fish upstream and downstream rolling throughout the day. And up until probably 30 minutes ago, I was on two fish. And I was questioning myself, I've got to be honest, but I stuck to my guns, stuck to my spot, kept the feeder going in. I'd just done the rig chat. And since then, I've had three chucks, three fish on the bounce. And this one is five pound 14. And it looks ever so big. <laughs> it looks much bigger than that to me, but there you go. There's just something about them. They're not the hardest fighting fish, but they know every inch of the river and so they use it to their maximum efficiency. So, there's, I mean, there's something about a lot of other species that are better. Barb will fight better, they probably look a little bit better, but the way in which you can target chub in many different rivers, on many different methods, on loads and loads of different baits, in all manner of conditions, from minus five when we was up here a year ago to 30 degrees in the summer, they just have it. I mean, they can be so frustrating, but they can be so rewarding at the same time. I just think they tick every single box, and if you had to, if you held a gun to my head and said fish for one species for the rest of your life, it would be chub. Simple. So, if we zip straight back to 12 months ago, day two was all about my old mate Gary Newman hopefully getting off the mark. He employed the same match-winning tactics that I used the day before, and to be fair, it didn't take him long to get amongst some big ones. Six pound one, and even though my two yesterday felt a little bit fluky, you've put time in, you've deserved that. 
Yeah, I've had a few trips in the past, never had a six before. Six pound one, absolutely cracking looking fish as well. Uh, pretty much took it on the drop, or well, not far off. The feeder had been out there 30 seconds and absolutely wrapped round. This result for Gary rounded off a fantastic couple of days. We both ended up with stour PBs, and to be fair, I'm sorry, Mrs. Macy. I had to come back this year and have a little go again. Day two and the weather took a turn for the worse and the river started rising. But luckily, the chub don't read the same weather reports as us because actually, I had one of the best days chubbing I've ever had. The day included one four pounder, five decent fives, and even a couple of sixes got in on the party. Over the last couple of years, my chub fishing has evolved quite considerably, to be fair. And I think it's because I got the monkey off my back from catching a big one. And by big one, I mean an eight pound fish. Um, and I did target that for seven years. I caught a lot of very big fish along the way. But since I've had that fish, I think I've been able to go back and just chill out and relax and almost go back to my childhood. And now my chub fishing's got to the point where it's the methods and the venues that are more important than the size of the fish. I'm quite lucky in the respect that there's a lot of big chub around now. Um, but really, I, I like coming to places like this where you just get multiple bites because at the end of the day, that's what I enjoy doing. And where it's going to go in the, in the years to come, I really don't know, but there'll always be something for me to get my teeth stuck into. Mm -hmm.